Did you know that tumbleweeds are actually an invasive species from Russia? Gordy, 75 million years ago, this area used to be a lowlands next to the large shallow sea which connected what is now known as North America. About 10 million years of shifting later, the land was forced upwards and over time a constant battle between floods, jungles, changing elevation and roaming mammals created the incredibly layered and harsh landscape that we know now today as the Badlands. Though the arid and erosion-prone landscape makes it difficult for life to exist here, there are some that have adapted to survive. But who are you? And why are you telling me this? It doesn't matter, Gordy. Now you need to wake up. Wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Wake up. Wake, wake up, up, Gordy. Gordy, you know, a lot of rattlesnakes could have survived off the water I just used to wake you up. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't know rattlesnakes drank water. Do snakes drink water? Yes, they will drink water when they encounter it in the environment, but otherwise they just rely on the water they get from the prey they eat. Oh, interesting. How do rattlesnakes prevent dehydration in this super hot climate? They have a few different uh, methods that they use to avoid dehydration. So one is when it's really, really hot out, like 30 degrees or more, they become more nocturnal. So then they're hunting and more active during the night. As well, their scales, their body scales are designed to prevent water loss. So they don't sweat through their skin or lose water through their skin like mammals and humans do. How often does a snake have to eat? Uh, well, cold-blooded animals don't actually need to eat very often. So that's the beauty of being a cold-blooded animal. You don't require a lot of energy. Whereas warm-blooded animals like ourselves, our bodies use a lot of energy, and that's why we need to eat a lot because our body has to work really hard to maintain a constant temperature. So if there's a year when there's an abundant rodent populations, they're gonna eat as often as they can. But some years, rodent populations actually crash and there's not a lot of prey around, and snakes can go for months really long periods of time without eating. Months without eating? Yes. Pregnant rattlesnakes actually go almost 20 months without eating. After meeting up with Sandy, I hung out with a rattlesnake wrangler who wears sandals and taught me that rattlesnakes aren't as dangerous as you'd think. I've looked up the death by prairie rattlesnake on the written, written record and I found two instances. Rattlesnakes, their first line of defense is they're gonna be relying on their camouflage. So they just sit still and they wait for you to pass. If they think that they've been seen, then they'll move to the second line of defense, which is, which is their rattle and their kind of aggressive pose and, and threat display. If you still are closing the gap on them um, and you get within strike range, then you might get bitten. So you really have to push the, the envelope to get bitten by a rattlesnake. So this is a dangerous hole. This is one of our rattlesnake dens. It's also got prickly pear cactus above it, and if you can see there, there's a black widow with her egg sac hanging out there at the entrance of the den. And just down in there is a mama rattlesnake. <laughs> black widow spiders and rattlesnakes aren't the only things that hang out in dark holes in the Badlands. There's something that's much cuter and shan't murder you. Yes, the kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats are experts at living in dry and arid conditions because they've evolved to be good at conserving and extracting water. One of their biggest strengths is that they have the most efficient kidneys of any other mammal in the mammal kingdom. This means that their kidneys are able to recycle and reuse the water they consume far more than other mammals, producing urine that is nine times more concentrated than a human's. Another reason they're great at conserving water is their gigantic schnozzes. When humans breathe into a plastic bag, you can see a bunch of moisture collect on it. Losing that much water from breathing is not an option for the kangaroo rat. Its huge nasal cavity can cool the air and capture some of that moisture on the way out. And they're still able to breathe. Another friend of the Badlands is the Boreal Scorpion. It gets all the water it needs from what it eats and is the most northern scorpion in the world. These scorpions can thrive in these barren conditions 
due to the ways they conserve energy. Not only do they hibernate during the winter, but when prey is scarce, they are able to lower the metabolism to the point where they are in a hibernation-like state. But don't be fooled by the sleepy scorpion. Even though they are inactive, they can quickly wake themselves up and catch an unsuspecting prey if it gets too close. When times are tough, they can survive off of one meal a year and will spend up to 97% of their lives either hibernating during winter or in this ultra-low metabolic state. While the barbed tail of the boreal scorpion is not that powerful, there's another creature in the Badlands that creates its own barbed sting from its surroundings. So why do some loggerhead shrikes choose to live here? Loggerheads like places like this because of the variety of grass hikes that they can hunt prey in. They have shrubs behind us that they can nest in, and then they have high places to perch on where they can swoop onto their prey. And what type of prey are we talking about here? What are they hunting? Well, they can pick up a lot of different prey. They'll do insects, but they also hunt other songbirds as well. Uh, they also hunt uh, voles, mice, uh, snakes, and toads. And there's even instances where they've seen a whole sex in a fence, every barbed wire with toads impaled on them. If a loggerhead shrike was to eat me, how would they do it? Well, Gordy, considering you'd be probably a large prey. Excuse me? <laughs> large prey items. Uh, the larger shrike would probably swoop down behind you and sever your spine uh, at the nape of your neck with their tomial tooth and hook beak that they have. And then they pick you up in their feet and actually impale you on a thorn or a barbed wire or something like that before shredding you apart. Look, I've been to the gym once, pal. And why, why do the loggerhead shrikes need to impale them and butcher them? Well, shrikes, they're a, they're a want-to-be raptor, right? Our bird of prey. They have good eyesight, they have a hooked bill, they have a tomial tooth on there to kill, help kill the prey. But what they lack are talons, and so they don't have ways to grasp onto the prey and hold them down. So they need uh, a thorn or a barb to impale them on and then shred them apart that way. So, Gordy, how does one survive in the Badlands? Some animals are able to extract water from what they eat. Others have kidneys and scales that are so efficient, they barely lose any water at all. And others impale living things on sharp objects so they can tear them apart. Now that you understand how to live in the Badlands, you must go out and use this newfound knowledge to not only survive, but to thrive. <laughs> <laughs>